Our YouTube Art History Research Paper Project is on the transitioning concept of ancient Egyptian female beauty, starring Eric Wilson, Richard Moreno, Vanessa Martinez, and Brianne Torres. The ideal of Mott in ancient Egypt is extremely vital in understanding the aesthetics of female beauty. Mott is more of a concept than an actual goddess. Her name literally meant truth in Egyptian, according to TorEgypt.net. Basically, Egyptians displayed this concept by showing their subjects in a proportionate and harmonious manner. This can be seen in depictions of Mott, especially with her main attribute being the feather of truth. The depiction of Mott with an ostrich feather shows how the Egyptians perceived in the aesthetic world. Art should be balanced and congruent. It should show proportion. That is why this piece showing Mott matches the art techniques of the ancient Egyptian time period. It impacted the Greek art because they portrayed the absolute symmetry seen in the rendition of Mott. This piece further demonstrates the fact that the ancient Egyptians believed in proportion in art and color for beauty intertwined. In Hashepu's mortuary temple, the Queen of Punt's Bas Relief is a prime example of this. One can see the girth of her waist, which is to put it candidly, obese, and she is vaguely seen with feminine attributes. One can clearly notice an ethnocentrism in female Egyptian art. Women that are natives of Egypt are shown to be alluring to the eye, as well as showing the concept of Mott, unlike women who are inhabitants of other civilizations, such as the Queen of Punt. This insightful image of the Queen of Punt shows a great deal of personality. It is almost comical how lopsided and distasteful the artist, who is unknown, portrayed this age-old sovereign. It is similarly relative to an ancient propaganda technique, an example of how it can impact political cartoons in today's society. The subjects in Egypt thought it was fact that foreign people were just plainly inferior, and they have done this in rendering the queen in such an unattractive fashion. This artwork fits into this time period due to the fact that it is in the profile view, typical of ancient Egyptian artists. These two artworks of the Queen of Punt and Ma should be studied today because it reveals the ideals of proportion and symmetry that the ancient Egyptians believed in. One can learn this by studying these pieces of art and perhaps how it reflects their personality and opinions of other people. It is obvious that their held belief that they were superior is clearly seen in these artworks. On a side note, anthropometric studies of pharaonic mummies have revealed is a fair representation of reality. In the Egyptian style of art, the ideal feminine form for women is a youthful and slim figure with narrow hips. When it comes to age, it is precisely represented. One example is Nebamun and Ipuki's funeral, which depicted an explicit display of age and youth in a woman's physique. An indication would be an increased weight. The features include breasts that sag, drooping derriere, and cheeks that pouch, often with horizontal lines across the torso. The, win the widow in the artwork is showing off both breasts that follow along a bending change of profile with a sagging chin. However, it is also rare to find that neither of the sexes in the depiction of the funeral displays any signs of wrinkles or gray hair. As opposed to men, it was more common to represent aging since it was a positive image for them. It is known from all periods, nonetheless, to display features of aging on women, whether aristocratic or not. These portrayals of older women may be an attempt to express the authority and experience conveyed by the image of the male aging. Between the 18th dynasty and the Armana period, signs of aging are absent amongst the images of elite women. Since women were more commonly depicted as being youthful and attractive, it was seldom to visualize them as older women or them growing older. Neither pregnancy nor the spreading waistline that many women must have had after years of bearing children is part of the image. This has been directed to establishing whatever was depicted in an alternative reality, 
such as the afterworld or the world of the gods. Upper class women, aristocrats, that were portrayed in tomb chapels were supposed to be sexually alluring to assist in their husband's regeneration and rebirth in the afterworld. In their husband's presence, they tend to show small wrinkles at the mouth corners and or running from the nose to the mouth. Only when they are appeared on monuments of their own, they are shown with more distinct aging signs. These elder women may have appropriated aspects of the Egyptian images of successful superior in the aristocratic sense were seen as lively and healthy servants of the tomb owner and his family in the afterlife. The majority of these women were servants, weavers, and mourners. They too were normally represented with more aging evidence than elite women. In an artistic perspective, these elder women might add variety to a group of workers or mourners. Generally, the characteristics of aging women in these artworks from Egypt include walking with a staff, sagging bosoms, stocky bodies, or alternatively, gauntness, and lines on the face. Queen Nefertiti displays signs of aging as well, which include the following. A downturned mouth or lines at the corner of the mouth, heavily lidded eyes, sagging stomach, drooping bosom and cheeks. It is interesting to know that this artwork was adapted by other women within the Armada period, just like elite male members adapted that of Akhenaten. The queen and the queen mother adopted images of female aging at one period. As prisoners of war from abroad, female captives might as well be associated with servants. They had been of minimal social rank, and they too depicted signs of aging. This had been their fate. Women were in a predicament. To appropriate images of experience and wisdom, they also had to depart from the socially dictated female norm and risk being associated with being peculiar and the unfamiliar. The challenge at hand for women remains that it had been hard to provide a positive opposition to youth and beauty. Overall, people were depicted at the peak of their physical attractiveness and energy in order to remain that way eternally. The color and scent were both requisites for women to be considered beautiful in ancient Egyptian culture. This can be seen in the romantic poem, Papyrus of Chester Beatty I, where the writer expresses his love for a woman's scent and how he longs for her bright skin. In the creation myth, it was believed that the lotus was one of the first things to come out of the water of Nun, which is where they acquired their perfumes. The gods were associated with fragrance, and the blue lotus represented eternal life with its fragrance. Since fragrance was important to a female's overall beauty, bathing became a part of life, especially because of the climate. The rich had facilities in their places of residence, while the majority of Egyptians bathed in the Nile. Their soaps consisted of animal and vegetable oils along with alkaline salts, which helped cleanse them of body odor, but also helped treat skin disease. Deodorant was also created from natural elements to fight odor from the scorching heat. There is a transition, however, from the Old Kingdom to the Middle and New. In the Old Kingdom, women with paler skin are seen as more beautiful, but as time passes, women begin to be portrayed with a yellowish or golden hue, which becomes the norm of beauty. The skin of women was usually paler than men because they worked inside most. Also, throughout all of the kingdoms, women were expected for their skin to be smooth and hairless. Not only was this for beauty, but it also rid the Egyptians of body life. Along with hygiene for beauty and a way of life, fashion was important, especially for the wealthy, although nudity was not a taboo as it is today. Their clothing was extremely thin and left them nearly nude, helping with extreme heat. Women often wore skirts that hugged their cows, which enhanced their slim figure. A sheath dress was the main thing they usually wore, which was very low and barely covered the breasts of women, again helping portray the idea of a slim figure. Clothing was made of linen that was dyed and sun bleached to create a fashionable color and an attractive white cloth that was very popular. In the New Kingdom, a basic robe outfit was now frequently worn by both men and women of Egypt. The shawl, being worn by high-class women, was also very popular. A 
An interesting part of the ancient Egyptian culture was that cosmetics were used by both sexes regardless of class status. Their cosmetics consisted of an oil base and women would apply it to their skin, eyes, and nails, much like the women of today. Red ochre was used for the lips, henna to dye the fingernails, and coal was applied to the eyes. Usually both the top and bottom eyelid was applied with a line extending the eyes to the corner of the face. Women would also apply a white makeup to the skin to make their complexion fair, which was the ideal of beauty. Wigs were also another important accessory to Egyptians. Again, because of the heat and light, all hair would be shaven or plucked off. The outcome they made was wigs. Unlike many toupee wearers of today, the Egyptians were quite proud of their wigs and made no attempt to pretend they were natural. Even though the wigs that were more costly were made of real human hair, the design of the wig could not be mistaken as real hair on top of one's head. They were proud of them anyways, so this did not matter. Paintings and sculptures frequently show an area of natural hair between the forehead and the wig. Symmetry, as in all human cultures, was seen as an ideal of beauty as well. This can be seen in, once again in Queen Nefertiti's bust, a statue of the female pharaoh's face. Nefertiti's face is shown several times throughout Egyptian history because of her beauty. Her high cheekbones, full lips, and arched eyebrows all help set an example of their idea of perfect beauty at the time. Because her face is shown so much, one can conclude that her beauty helped with her fame and respect, setting her apart from other royal women of Egypt. Overall, the transition in female beauty in ancient Egypt has many aspects. Throughout art history, one can learn where modern day beauty traditions originated. They are listed as the following, through cosmetics and symmetry of the human body and art, the meaning of Egyptian life and religion through art, the different classes in society and the way they survived and dealt with circumstances, the opinions and views of both genders through art, and the normal boasting of natural beauty through fashion concludes Egyptian beauty overall.